Welcome back. Welcome back to another B Line to Passports. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And uh, tonight we have our good friend and partner. Uh, is a, a pleasure for me to have Mr. Chris Roberts with me here in our show. Welcome to B Line to Passports. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me this evening. Thank you for accepting the invitation. And Chris, like every week we ask our guests how everything started. Uh, tell us about your story. Tell us about uh, your childhood, education, uh, all this information that our guests want to know about our guests. Sure. Well, Joe, I was born in a, a, a real small town in rural Pennsylvania, North West Pennsylvania, close to Erie. Um, I grew up as a young child there. Uh, when I was three years old, I was hit by a car. It was uh, a Lincoln Continental doing 45 miles an hour. Ironically, later in life, a Lincoln Continental was one of my first vehicles. <laughs> uh, Went to grade school in the same small town, you know, um, grew up with with, with uh, an older brother who had, you know, older friends that I'd pile around with. Uh, as I was growing up with my older brother, he, uh, he was a bit of a knucklehead. So I kind of grew up in the shadow of that. And then, you know, I went to grade school, elementary school there. And my parents divorced. This was when I was, in, well, I was young. I can't recall exactly when, but anyhow, my mother moved to Southwest Florida and um, started a new life down here. And at that point, I moved, you know, between the two states. You know, most of my young life, it was school in Pennsylvania, summer in Florida, vice versa, you know, back and forth until I turned 13 and then I moved to Southwest Florida full time. Now, mind you, I grew up again in a small rural, I mean, a rural town, grew up poor. Uh, I remember waking up at 3 a.m. before grade school to go with my dad on the mountainside to check fur bearing traps. You know, my dad did anything he could for money. He was very industrious. He was a mechanic. So, you know, he, he always provided, but again, you know, life was rough in the mountains of Pennsylvania. So we did what we had to do. Learned a lot of important life lessons, you know, running those hillsides as a young lad. To be honest with you, I absolutely despised it. But looking back now, <laughs> learned a lot. Uh, anyhow, I moved with my, my grandparents where I recall getting off the school bus and I'd split firewood to heat the home. I mean, I was 12 years old, had a five gallon bucket nailed to the, to the barn for my basketball hoop, weight bench, heavy bag up in the hayloft. So yeah, I guess I was a country boy. So here we come to 13 years old and I moved to Southwest Florida full time. Now, mind you, I didn't have the umbrella of the older brother who at this time had went on and he had gotten himself in a good bit of trouble when he was, 16 17 and he ended up getting sent to a reform reform school over by philadelphia called glenn mills wow. so he ended up getting a full college scholarship for wrestling so he really turned his life around you know but anyway he wasn't there you know to to be my protector and again coming from a small town into more of a a metropolis area you know a larger city than what i was used to anyway to me it was huge so i found myself uh <clears throat> in a new school around new people bullying was an issue uh it got to the point where i didn't even want to go to school because i knew i was going to have to deal with these bullies well that led me down a road of you know, isolation, lots of anger, lots of stuff, you know, because, you know, and it's like today you hear about, 
you know, like school shootings and whatnot. And back in my day, it was really unheard of. Now, mind you, there what it happened, but regardless, you know, there was it was tough. You know, I recall in our high school, someone got shot. So, you know, here I am, country boy at heart, dropped into this. And uh, I ended up finding myself in the arms of a street gang. Uh, with the street gang came drug addiction, homelessness. I remember I was a homeless teenager. You know, uh, I can't blame my people. Uh, I was, you know, proud that I joined a gang. And it's not that I was like, hey, I want to join your gang. These people invited me to join their gang. And it turns out it was it's one of the most violent street gangs in the country. Wow. So so when i told my people my parents were like okay go live with them then so as a teenager i'm living with this gang from chicago <laughs> you know these guys were really tough customers and at that point my life really went into a downward spiral uh, as far as addiction i dropped out of high school you know and, and that basically summed up from 13 to 18 my life was spent in that turmoil chaos you know just kind of lost you know wow. not having my brother around not having that protection you know in essence uh i put on a a big front you know i made myself to be this really tough guy you know and, and i didn't run with anybody i was solo you know i kept to myself and I just by chance happened to cross these two gentlemen one evening and uh, I recall uh, I lived in a neighborhood and on the corner of our neighborhood a salsa band would form every Friday night and they'd practice. Well, I met these guys over there and uh, they kind of took me under their wing. They seen my plight, you know, they seen because, you know, not only did the bullying take place in school, but it was also in the neighborhood, you know. Young kids in the 90s, man, everybody's tough. Everybody has something to prove. But, you know, again, it it was uh, a lot of, I made a lot of bad choices. But at the same time, at that point in my life, I really was probably desperate and destitute. I, I, I missed what was comfortable, what was, what was my norm. So I became like, I guess you could say a chameleon and just blend it in with the people that I, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So here I am. I found myself, you know, they, they say, they, they call them wannabes or what have you. But I found in my life, it wasn't that I wanted, I was a wannabe, quote unquote, but they say a wannabe is a gonna be. So even in that aspect of life, you know, you apply yourself and that's what you get. But anyway, uh, again, from, from 13 to 18, I was kind of in a tailspin. And then one, I don't know. I, I watched, I watched the FBI. Yeah. The, <laughs> my roommates. And one day I'm sitting playing Sega Genesis and the front door flew off the hinges. <laughs> it's the FBI. So, yeah, it was, you know, I mean, these guys were connected, real deal. And it came down to where they were telling on each other to the FBI. And, and I was the only, the only white member in my city, actually, at that time. And uh, I knew it wouldn't be long until all fingers would point at the gringo, <laughs> if you will. So, uh at that point, you know, I reached out to the two guys that I met at my friend's house, the salsa band guys. And I was like, you know, guys, I want out of this. I said, I see what's going on here. This is no bueno. You know, I, I want to change my life. I was 18 years old. You know, again, a high school dropout, an addict at this time, homeless from here, couch surfing here to there. And I came to my senses, Joe, and I says, you know what? Enough's enough. If I don't get out of here, I'm going to die. You know, 
So they approached the senior guy and uh, he was going to kill me. He wow. was going to kill me. So lo and behold, you know, the two guys that I spoke of came from Chicago and they set it up, you know, and I remember times that they didn't have food. They didn't have something to drink, you know, what have you. And, you know, I had middle class people, so I would always help them out. So, again, when when the time came for me to say to myself, you know, this is enough, I knew I could confide in them because, you know, they confided in me. And in fact, when the other people showed up, that's what got me in was the confidence that I had gained through these other two fellas. But uh, they saved my life one night, Joe. They, uh, I ended up getting blessed out of this gang and I went my way. I, in fact, at 18 years old, I left Southwest Florida hitchhiking to Louisiana. Uh, no real plan. We were going to New Orleans. There was a really bad flood, 90, early 90s. And our intentions were to go over there and work until we could uh, get up and on our feet and go from there. And uh, that was most of the, the youth years that I experienced. Boy, they were tumultuous. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, but this is a, a great story. Uh, thank you. And, and thank you for bringing this to, uh, you know, our audience. Then they heard, uh, you know, straight from somebody that decided to change his life at that young, young age. Uh, then, hey, this road is so bad. And I'm going to die if I continue in this path. It's time to change, leave, you know, and basically go against uh, the odds because we know what happened for people they get in. Uh, the only two ways then they're out is for dead or in jail. That's basically the only two ways then uh, people uh, involve on. on on crime or, or, or criminal uh, activities, and and I'm glad that you took the decision, uh, you know, move out of that and become who is Chris today. And when we come back, we're gonna continue uh, with your story. We're gonna continue listening uh, what you have been doing in the last two three years of, of your life. Um, and then we're going to talk about the projects and all these films uh, that you've been involved in being part uh, in the Central Florida area and out of the Central Florida area as well. But let's take this short commercial break. And when we come back, we will continue listening the story of Mr. Chris D. Roberts here on Beeline to Passports on GK. I radio. We are back. We are back from this short commercial break and great music here on GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And tonight we have an actor, producer, and a stunt coordinator, Mr. Chris Roberts. Chris, um, what you have been doing in the last two or three years on your career? Tell us. Uh, about all this great project that you have been involved? Sure, Joe. Uh, in 2020, well, let me let me take it back to 2019 real quick, my first film experience. It was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I answered an ad on the internet, 
uh, <clears throat> they were asking for extras for uh, some Netflix movie. Uh, so I, I went ahead and filled out the form, sent it, what have you. And then uh, they got back to me and they was like, you know, why don't you come down to Pittsburgh for the weekend? We're going to cast you as an extra. And the film is Sweet Girl starring Jason Momoa. So I was like, you know, let me see. I went ahead and got a, got a few days off at work booked an Airbnb, went to Pittsburgh, man, and made some movie magic. Uh, that was my first film experience. And at that time, I was back in my hometown in rural Pennsylvania. And, I, you know, I fell in love with, with being on set. And this was a large set. Uh, you know, all the hustle bustle, you know. It was phenomenal, just some of the action scenes that I was able to be part of and, and, and you know, not to mention getting to talk to Jason Momoa. That's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, at that time, Joe, I decided that in rural Pennsylvania, there's not much opportunity to find gigs. So having roots here in Florida, it was, I discussed it with my people, you know, and, and I'm an auto detailer by profession, by trade, my nine to five, if you will. And, it, and there's a much larger market here for that as well, which is what I am employed now full time at as well as detailing. Um, but I decided it was time to increase my my ability to earn in that field, in my field. So came down to Southwest Florida and I set up, I got a, a detailing uh, supervisor job at an RV dealership. And I, needless to say, I've been detailing since I've been here in 2020, I came down. So for the past two years, I reminded myself about that film experience in 2019. And I started to just get involved amongst the, you know, the actor groups, the film groups all across the whole state of Florida, not just my region. And, you know, things started to, to come into fruition. You know, I started to get responses. Uh, <laughs> but the best response I got was I was on set in Miami. And it was one of the first film gigs I had acquired. Also an extra on uh, Secret Society 2 with uh, Jeremy Meeks. I worked with Jeremy and, and the rest of the cast, great people, phenomenal time. But anyway, I snapped a picture with my little, might as well have been a flip phone because the picture quality was trash. So I went ahead, but I was proud of it. <laughs> I sent it, I put it in one of the local film groups and, and, and someone come along and, and commented, sir, with all due respect, you need new headshots. So I, I was like, yeah, you, you're kind of on to something. And if I'm ever up in Tampa, you know, I'll take you up on that. We'll get a photo shoot going. And uh, 10 minutes later, she messaged or she commented on the same thread. And she's like, I'll tell you what. She's like, I need a villain for my movie trailer. Come on up wow. to Tampa and play my villain. And I'll give you a professional photo shoot in nice. exchange. Nice. So I was able to uh, network in that fashion, went up to Tampa, got some professional shots. So I was, you know, I was slowly building my portfolio, my acting portfolio, my resume with, you know, something as simple as, as being in a movie trailer, which, you know, I took the footage from that. And I was I was supposed to audition for a role um, for a gentleman. And he was British, J.P. Gates. Uh, he was he was probably wondering what what was taking me so long to submit my audition. But anyhow, instead of the audition, I was like, you know, let me see if I can send him this trailer. So lo and behold, that what seemed I mean it was huge, but the insignificant what seemed so insignificant opened doors. Uh, I sent the movie trailer. And within minutes, they responded with a time and location to be on set. And I found out that I was going to be in a fight scene. <laughs> My first ever film fight scene. So I was pretty excited. 
And you know what? It, more so when I heard who it was going to be with. Wow. Damien Chapa. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I grew up watching Blood In, Blood Out religiously it was it was like the gospel for us you know me and me and my my friends will say yes yes anyway uh here i am you know 30 years after i watched this movie as a teenager and my first ever fight scene was with not only a hollywood actor but one that i admired growing up you know it's miklo just to be honest i mean it was a thing it's a cult classic blood in blood out damian Chapa, appreciate everything michael ocherino appreciate you jp gates all you guys thanks for the opportunity so anyway you know from that one headshot opportunity that arose was through network so as I continued to network, opportunities continued to pop up. I continued to meet new people, you know, and all the while, mind you, uh, I've never had any acting class. I've never, you know, I, I read some books. I read the Meisner technique, you know, I'm familiar with learning how to act. So every opportunity, that put me in front of the camera, that put me around people in this industry that have been doing this was a blessing, man. You know, it, it was just like, it was just like a film lesson. You know, every time I show up on a film set, I learn something from somebody. And, and so having said that, to say that's the extent of, of any training that I have at the moment, you know, I've considered moving forward into other, you know, acting classes, maybe some theater, improv whatever the case may be but anyhow uh i've learned to appreciate people like santo suave of fuego sonic films yourself you know dylan michael swan tom swift kareem you know there's so many people that kind of you know hold the door for you they're like hey you know we see what you know we see what you have to bring let us use you here and it's like you know i see myself in this role i'm like yeah let me let me audition for that role but i might not get the lead role but all of a sudden these people create a role for me to have just to have me on board you know and it's it's really an honor and uh i can't you know, there's not enough Facebook likes or heart reacts or Facebook posts to express how grateful I really am. You know, the stuff that I post, I often, you know, give shout outs and this and that. But, yeah, I'm, I'm truly grateful for every opportunity that's been afforded me as an aspiring actor. No, and, and let me tell you, uh, you know, you, you, you're great. Yeah. We work together in uh, a project, uh, and basically that was a kind of a combination. Uh, you know, it wasn't an instant combination because we start talking, and then uh, okay, we're gonna do this part of this part, and we turn to become the badass <laughs> in that movie. <laughs> In that film, we become the badass. Uh, and for people want to see, just go to the Instagram or to the INDB because I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm going to upload that picture on the INDB. And then I, I have Excellent. with uh, Chris Roberts, um, then we were partners, police officer, police detective uh, partners. Detectives. And we, we killed that scene. Uh, hey, the, remember the plot thickener, the, the whole plot twist, the scene before. Remember that? That's correct. Uh, That's yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, did, we did two films in one night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. 
Uh, it was two films in one night and two completely opposite uh, films. Uh, one, um, you know, police officer. The other, we were uh, the priest and the devil <laughs> fighting. Most, <laughs> the most priest. Definitely. Yes, most, yes, indeed. most definitely. Man, uh, let's take another short commercial break. And when we come back, we continue uh, telling our guests Uh, you know, I know we're out in information about our guests, but remember people to drop a comment or question you would like to hear them answer on the show. The number is 407-476-9059. Remember to say my name, Joe Batista, followed by your name, your question or comment, and you could also hear it here on GKI Radio on the Line to Passport. We'll be right back with more of Christian D. Roberts. We are back. We are back from commercial break and great music here on Beeline to Passports on GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And tonight we have Mr. Chris Roberts. He is an actor, producer, and a stunt choreographer. Um, we have many, many, many questions about projects then you've been involved with recently and uh, you know we were working in another project um then that project uh, you just told me um uh, behind the scene here and then uh, there was completed or your part was completed on that film um beside that film uh, what other films you've been working in the present uh in the central florida or out of the central florida area there's been quite a few joe uh the first one that comes to mind this is a project uh i've been on since i want to say april of last year we've been working on it i'm uh not only a lead role i'm also a producer uh i've helped in the casting efforts um <clears throat> My character is Father Larry Mullen in Fuego Sonic film, Surviving Jehovah. Um, I rec just recently wrapped that character, in fact. Uh, I've been I've been on a couple sets. I, I, I filmed Nefarious, uh, Fear Fame production, Joe Fame, Heather Fraley. Excellent working with you guys, as always. Uh, Rick Owen on that project. Had the opportunity to travel a little further north, even um, working with uh, Keith, Keith Driver up there, uh, and his his people, um, Danielle. Uh, the film I was I was an officer. Um, it was it was a great scene. It was uh, an investigation scene. I got to to go in and do. Um, some like CSI stuff as an officer. So that was a great experience. Um, let's see. I've done a commercial, one commercial so far. Uh, it was for Husqvarna. I, I was portraying a wounded veteran at a, it was actually a golf country club, but we had it set up as what appeared to be like a VA facility. And as I sat in my wheelchair, the autonomous lawnmower would go around and they'd catch the camera, you know, showing it from all angles. And I'm just sitting there in my wheelchair reading a little book. <clears throat> Had the privilege to be in a music video with uh, Caitlin down in Naples. Shot that. Uh, Cat with Catastrophic Films. Um, 
I mean, there's so many names. I feel so bad. I should probably shouldn't even have started mentioning names because I know there's many, many, many I'm forgetting. But I, you guys are all up here. Well, how about in here? Anyhow, uh, it's Kylie, Lexi. Um, at the moment, I film next weekend. I film the weekend after that and the weekend after that. Numerous projects, uh, flexing some some new skills in the craft, you know, taking on different character type of roles, uh, usually an officer, a soldier, uh, a villain. I uh, had the opportunity just a couple week weekends ago. I did uh, VH1 has a docu series, My True Crime Story. Had the privilege to work on a, a, a set up around Tampa with them. Uh, great opportunity, great people, very professional. Um, it'll be a, an episode coming in the upcoming fall series season rather um just uh that's that's about the extent at the moment uh, like i said i've got numerous projects the next few weekends so and it, that's how the beginning of the year started joe to be honest awesome. with you i think i think every weekend in january i was traveling somewhere to film you know and, and as you know not everybody may know yeah sometimes you do it on your own dime you know that's right that's you, right we're trying to and, and it's okay because we're trying to build a resume you know it's a hobby at the moment but you know every step every every project every connection every network made you know is, is building if nothing else experience you know so it's having said that to say you know i don't mind not being paid to be on a project because it allows me the opportunity as i said earlier to learn to to apply you know and, and to, to learn from my mistakes and, and whatever whatever the case may be so in essence it does pay that's so right that's right there's that you know and, and it there there's times where just like anyone else will we'll be like what am i doing why am i doing this because I'm passionate about it, you know, right. I, I do it because I enjoy it. It's fun. I meet a lot of people, you know, and whatever. <laughs> no, and, and you said <coughs> and, and, and then, you know, hit the nail, hit the nail, because sometimes people don't understand. And to build a resume, you need to put your effort. You need to put your time. Uh, and you, yes, we, you're building. It's not, and you're going and take the classes and or reading the book and learn how to act, and you're gonna be paid right away. Lucky, right. exactly. You know, the person it happens. They, sure, they they get you know the the um, you know finish the learning and get paid gigs right away. Most of the time. You need to, you know, work, 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 work for free. And yes, then sir. the paid ones, they come. And sometimes it, they, they have paid, but it's some, you know, uh, some money. It's not the real money. Uh, yeah, and I, you need to invest time and effort <laughs> on this career. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned it. You know, you will get paid. On some projects, you get paid, and it's like a scale, a scale wage for a day, yes. you know. But I've been, I was on a film set where I heard, overheard a conversation, and this actor was getting paid a whole lot more than I ever got paid. So, you know, stuff like that, hearing stuff like that is, 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 is awe inspiring, but it's at the same time inspiring. It's like, wow. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you see the, the big numbers, you know, uh, becoming a supporting actor for some, you know, well-known um, production film or a well-known actor, uh, you know, you're getting some money. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Any step-by-step step to get into the point to the, okay, 
now you can negotiate. You, you get to the point that you will negotiate uh, your character, you will negotiate your fee, um, you will negotiate, including the time, then you can film. Um, I sure. know some people <coughs> like that. Uh, some people then uh, they negotiate now and when they can film and they uh, all then the investment that they need to do on that um, actor uh, just to be on a film. And that includes, you know, traveling, uh, hotels, sure. meals, um, clothing, everything, everything, everything. Uh, and, and sometimes they tell you, okay, you need to go uh, for feeding. And it's the day before. This person, they do the feeding several months before with all expenses Hey, just to go do the fitting, come back. <laughs> See, and I've I've had I've had a similar experience where um, it was last year. I, I was at a, a meet and greet with an actor, and uh, we talked about collaborating. And he, you know, he mentioned flying me to to location and all of that stuff. You know, I mean, far be it for me. I mean, far be it for me to take a week off of work, fly myself to go film movies. I, you know what I mean? That ain't happening. Not that I'm hurting, but, you know, to have even just heard or even discuss that with somebody, you know, hey, look, I got a role coming up. He's like, I'll fly you up here. And I'm like, wow. Yes. You know, yeah. could it happen? The opportunity's already presented itself once. What's next? Bring it on. You know exactly. what I'm trying to say? Exactly, exactly. I, got, I have a good friend of mine, and uh, this person received already contracts just to sign. To sign, they sign it already. Just waiting for the the time to film, just to go sure. to Canada uh, to film, and the other is to go to Europe uh, to do the film with it's well known um, actors and actresses. And this person is very young. And this person is basically step by step getting. It's true that started at a very young age, but sure, sure. he's built. He's already approximately fifteen years, approximately in this industry. Sure, it took That's it took time. Time, time. that Lots is of effort. Key. That's yes, correct. Sir. That's correct. Well, let's take another short commercial break, and when we come back. Uh, we will continue uh, listening Mr. Chris D. Roberts' story. And people, thank you for being with us, listening his story. But we'll be right back with more of Beeline to Passports on GKI Radio. We are back. We are back from this short commercial break and great music. You're listening to GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And you have one of the... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, name you one of the greatest of these times and getting to the point that everybody wants him on his film. That's why he's very active. Every weekend, he's been uh, in different films, independent films, and non-independent films. Uh, we have Mr. Chris Roberts. He's an actor, producer, and also a stunt choreographer. Chris, um, we talk about uh, the past. We talk about you know uh, projects that you are working. Uh, What is your plans in the next year, in the next five years? And also, we want to uh, hear your social media and your IMDb, and the people start following your career. Yes, sir. 
Thanks, Joe. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's that will tune in. That's tuned in. Uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the uh, the interview and hearing my story. Uh, maybe we can work together one day. Who knows? I'm available. <laughs> uh, so the next year. I look to, uh, with, with, with the amount of travel I do, it would be feasible to possibly relocate closer to the industry opportunities. It's, it's not anything solid yet, but I'm, I'm kicking it around in my head. I feel like it would be better for me to be closer to opportunity. Um, that way the travels less and with what all the stuff that comes along with that time travel lack of rest uh, uh you know i'm going to continue obviously in the industry i'm in i'm an auto detailer uh if you know you know <laughs> i'll just say that it's uh it's 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 a passion in, of its own um taking things that you know these cars that were trashed and making them beautiful again such as life you know i've seen that um i wouldn't mind returning to work uh, in the medical field, I, I had some medical field experience, but at the same time, you know, whatever, whatever allows me to continue pursuing the, the acting passions that I have, the, the hopes and the dreams, the aspirations, you know, I'm, obviously I'm going to continue to, to work because I like to eat, <laughs> but anyhow, I would like to continue to, yeah, pursue opportunities uh of course you know i have high hopes i think out of the box you know i in my mind i already got a star on the boulevard it's you know that may sound silly to most but at the same time it, it's a huge motivator to just dream big think big you know don't think small don't believe small be careful of the people that try to make you believe small you know keep you in a box Oh, I started boxing, Joe. Did I tell you that? I've been been training in the boxing gym. So I want to continue to uh, to work on my fitness, my personal fitness, my mental fitness, spiritual fitness. You know, it's it's all multifaceted. You know, which in turn, whatever makes me a better person is going to make me a better actor, so on and so forth. You know, and again, you know, I've been in the trenches, way, way, way down. So everywhere I go from here is up, 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 you know, so I can't lose with that mentality. So to continue working in this industry is, is my, my plan, my aspiration for my future. Um, as far as my social media platforms, uh, I do most of my interactions on Facebook. You can find me. I'm Chris D Roberts on Facebook. You will see my profile picture. Uh, let me see Instagram. I don't do as it, now, mind you, having said that I do the Facebook most, I, I do want to be continue to incorporate some Instagram. You know, I really need to get some content together. Uh, the Instagram is Chris D Roberts one and it's K R I S D Roberts one and TikTok. At Chris Roberts 7692. And I don't even know if I have anything on TikTok yet, Joe, to be honest with you. I, I just recently got plugged in. You know, I, anybody want to teach me some social media savvy, some some stunts, some stuff that I should be doing, feel free to reach out. Uh, I really need a kick in the, in the tail about making some content here. I mean filming and, and getting and i need demo reels i need all this stuff so you know anyone listening if you have any opportunity if it's sweeping the floor taking out the trash after you guys wrap filming you know i'm there i'm that guy you know if you you just point where you need me to stand i want to get involved in this industry you know i, I want to i want to continue to learn and, and to you know I love hanging out with people in the industry because I see them as something that I could be, 
you know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's almost like it's a trickle down thing. It, I got to be there, Joe. I got to, you know, I want to book gigs. I want to learn more about the, the stunt aspect of, of the industry, uh, the business side of the industry, you know, maybe get an agent because we all know that being your own representative, you know, I represent myself Monday through Friday, eight hours a day, you know, so it's like we do all this stuff on our own, you know, maybe sometime I might look into getting some represent representation, you know, and just continue to pursue this, this, uh, this dream, this desire. And, and if nothing else, I'm becoming a better me every step of the way. And, and you say something very important every every week we talk about this on the show uh, then you uh, to be in the entertainment industry uh, specifically or on in, in any industry as well but in the entertainment industry you need to build your body your mind and your spirituality because it's it's hard if people don't understand then being you know an actor being in the entertainment industry it's a hard profession it's not uh sweet all the time um uh, for the faint of heart exactly exactly uh and you need to build that part because you need to be strong on all these areas to continue building your your character that is your own uh soul uh to continue uh, in the industry uh what is your imdb my imdb is chris d roberts uh i don't know if there's an address maybe i can let me see yeah he's, he, i just uh check his name uh chris d roberts and uh, you find okay. it like that chris d roberts on imdb Uh, and uh, they have uh, all this project and he is involved in the, the project that they already are completed and they're ready to show. Uh, I just saw uh, the mechanic, yeah? Uh, that's the one that is uh, ready to show on the uh, I, your INDB that I, I just saw. Um, Chris, has been a pleasure uh, for us to have you here in our show. Um, great story of, uh, Thanks, you know, you moving, you moving from uh, all these situations in your life since you was a child, uh, your juvenile time and how you move out of there and become who is Mr. Chris Roberts today, uh, an actor, a producer, also a stunt choreographer. Uh, again, Chris, thank you for accepting the invitation to be in our show, and we will continue working together. Uh, I will uh, talk to you after this uh, show because I just I received a, a project and some stuff that you mentioned during this uh, recording and during this um, uh, radio show, we uh, basically was a connection uh, for that project that is coming up. But See how that works, Joe? That's a beautiful thing, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Chris. And thank you, people, for another opportunity to have you here in our show uh thank you for being with us with another beeline to passport in re in gki radio and remember be a leader rock the world inspires others with your emotions in control good night